Hi everyone, I'm Bonnie and welcome to the Java Fundamentals for Android Developers. Uh, right now, uh, we are going to do the first masterclass. So the next week, ex expect another masterclass. So right now, we are going to review some of the topics on that you learn on the lesson one, and later we are, uh, it, but in a more practical way. And later we are going to have a space for Q and A. So if you have a question, leave it on the comments, and I'm going to review it. So first, I'm going to share my screen with you so we can start. Okay, the first things that you learn on the Java Fundamentals the lesson one are the operators, control flow, classes, objects, and, and methods. Okay, so the operators, there are three types of operators, the relational ones that are greater than, greater equal than, less than, and less equal than. The equality ones, uh, equal than and different than, and the logical ones, and and or. This, uh, this double ampersand is the symbol for the and operator, and this double bar is the or operator. We use the operators to control the, to compare expressions to later control the flow of our code. So let's go to the code. So here is. This project uh, is on Codeboard, it's public, so if you want to try it, this is the number of the project. Uh, I'm going to share you in the comments. Okay, here's the project, so if you want to try it yourself, here it is. Okay, let's do this. The first thing, uh, as the operator that I mentioned, here is the equal than. If you see, if I done five equal than five, it's true. And here is the not equal five, not equal to seven, it's true. So if I change this, for example, for a four, five and four are not equal, so this will be false. Greater than. The greater less than, so if six is bigger than or equal than six, is true because they are equal. The less than, the less equal than, and we can store uh, the true or false expressions. So we can store all these type of expressions in a Boolean variable. Remember this that a variable is just a reference on memory. So we are storing the values that these operators return that are that could be true or false. So if you see here, we are going to compare the, the expression sunny day and the expression rainy day with an AND operator that you could write it with a double ampersand. If you see, sunny day is true. Okay, so the operator then tries the and with the second operator that is false. So true and false is false because with the and operator, only if all the operands that are being compared, uh, expressions that are being compared, uh, they should be true to return a true. So because rainy day, is false, this entire expression will return false. Then is the OR operator. So for example, we have a sunny day true and a rainy day that is false. So true or false will be true because with, with the OR, with one unique true, all the expression will become true. Let's try it on the code. So first, I'm going to run it. Oh, it's sunny day. Well, this is structure, I'm going to explain it to you right now. But first, you need to understand that there is some expressions that are the operands that will help us with this type of statements later. So, 
we use the operators to control the flow of our code because our code run up to down in order uh, each instruction per time. So if we want to change the control flow, if we, if we want to change the flow of our executing code, we need to first uh, have some statements that will help us with that. So the first one is the conditional statement when if you enter to this conditional statement, there will be a condition that is an expression. So if this condition is true, there is going to go to a block of code, and execute all that block of code and continue. If the condition is false, it will skip the statement and go to the next block of code. Uh, for the conditional statements, there are uh, two of them that you review on the lesson, the if statement and the switch statement. So let's go to the code. Okay, here is the if statement. I'm going to comment this. No, I will leave it. So the if statement is always if the expression then. If you want you can add an else expression that will execute if the condition is false, like this. You can add it the else. So sunny day, you know that is true. So if I run it, because it's true, it's going to execute this block of code. So if you see, it's printing sunny day. Now, if I use the rainy day expression that is false, if I execute it, this expression, oh, sorry, I don't compile it. I read it. So this expression is false. So this statement is going to be skipped and is going to execute this statement. So if you see, it's printing to console the rainy day. Let's try this expression. If I compile it, If you see, true and false is false. So this expression is false. So this is printing rainy day. Let's try this one, the or one. Okay, I compile it. And so there is something that is named a short circuit evaluation. So for this statement, this first expression is true. It, the, the execution knows that the OR just needs one true to know that the entire expression is true. So because it's a short circuit evaluation, it's going to stop here because I already know that will return true and don't try to do the, the next things. This is going to help you to save in some a little bit time or uh, execution time. And for example, if I switch the positions first, the rainy day, and later the, the sunny day, because of the short circuit evaluation with one false, the entire expression will be false because of the and operator. So this is going to stop here because of the short circuit evaluation and just enter to the second statement. Let's do this. Oh, here is, and it's printing rainy day. Okay. If you want to add a new expression, for example, I'm going to create another variable that is going to be number. So if num if we we can ask here if the number is equal than zero. So if it's equal than to zero, it's going to print sunny day. And if not, it's going to print rainy day. Because this is true, it's printing sunny day. But if you want to know if this number is not just only zero, uh, 
if you want to know if, it, if this number is equal to five, for example, I'm going to add to this else statement an else if statement. So you added the if with the, with the else and the expression. So here I'm going to write the number equal to, for example, one or five, like I said before. So if I compile it, this continually printing sanity. Let's change the value, compile. And if I execute it, here is printing rainy because it's not equal to zero. So it goes to this else if statement and it's equal to five. So it is printing this one. Now, if you are thinking to add more and more of these ones with with different number uh, expressions that you are evaluating the same expression, there is another statement that is going to be uh, that that will help even more if you use it. For example, let me change this. There is the switch statement. The switch statement, I'm just going to comment this one. Yeah, the switch statement is going to evaluate this expression from here and try to compare it to each of the cases that is here. So for example, for the expression one, if I compile it and run it, if you see, is printing option one because this options is going to be evaluated like a equal done with zero because it's not zero is going to the next case is equal to one so it's going to enter this block of code and with this break is that is a keyword this we are going to say to the switch to stop here so when this block of code finish, found the break, and exit the switch statement. If I change this to the number two, uncompile it, if you see, it's printing now the option two. For example, that there is no uh, match. Let's change this to three and run it. If you see, it's not printing anything because none of these cases is true. So if you want to have uh, another statement that if there is no one that is uh, doing it well, you can add that default statement. With the default statement, if none of these cases are true, it's going to execute this block of code. So let's compile it and run it. So if you see, it's printing non option because this case is false, this one too, and this one too. So all the cases are false. So it's going to execute the default block. Okay, let's go to the presentation again. So now, we, for example, we need to do a uh, to execute a block of code if, if many times. So we need a control flow that is named loop statement. So the loop statement, you enter the flow, there is a condition that is uh, 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 an expression that, that if it's true, is going to enter to the block of code, then return to the, to the condition if it's still true, is going to enter again until this condition became false. If the condition became false, it's going to skip the statement and exit the while loop, the, the loop. So for the loop statement in the lesson, you reviewed two of them, the for loop and the while loop. So let's go to the code again. Oh, here is. So the first statement will have three parts. The initializer, 
comma separated, the condition to stop, and yeah, comma separated, and the step. If you want to don't initialize and don't have a step, you can do it. But always you have to left a condition to stop the loop. If not, it's going to execute for always. So here I'm going to start the index variable with zero. Then the condition is executed. Zero is less than five, true. So it's going to enter the statement. So prints index zero, then do the step. So this is going to update the, the variable to one. So now the value of index is one and one is less than five is true. So it's print one. Then it's going to print two, three, four. Then in the four, the index became five. So five is not uh, less than five. So this expression is false. And, the, and this block of code is going to be skipped and continue with the normal flow. If you see, just print zero, one, two, three, and four. There is another type of statement, the while statement. This statement is just going to review a con one condition. So if in the for you only need the condition, it's better if you use a while. So index is bigger than zero. So this expression is true. So it's going to enter this block of code. Remember, if you are using a while, you should have a step or something to stop inside the while because if not, this statement will be always true. So ensure that you have something, some kind of condition to stop the while. Let's run this. So five is bigger than zero. So it's printing. Oh, let me give you here. Right now it's bigger, okay. So this in, this one is printing five, then it's going to to rest one. The index is four, so it's, it's still bigger than zero. So it's going to print five, four, three, two, one. And in the one, here one plus one will be zero. So here zero is not bigger than zero. So this statement is become, become false and exit the block of code, continuing with the normal flow. So let's go to the presentation again. Now, the other thing that you learned during the lesson was classes, objects, and methods. So a class is a abstra an ex abstraction of something that we want to represent. For example, if we want to represent a dog, we know that that dog has some certain shape, some certain food, some say, uh, that eats, go to walk, run, because we know the concept of what is a dog. So we, when we are going to declare a class, we are declaring the way that all of this uh, object will, will manner the, the behavior. So for example, for this class dog, we know that this shape is representing most of all the dogs. And if we want to create one instance of the dog, we can create multiple instances uh, depending on this class. So for example, an instance of the uh, instance object of the class dog could be a schnauzer, a husky, or a golden retriever. So each of the classes will have some data and some behaviors. So the data will, is named as fields. And these fields will be unique uh, variables for each of the instance that will be created. So for example, for these fields of the class dog will be the breed of the dog, the type of food, and the age. For example, for this schnauzer that looks pretty old, 
This is the breed is a schnauzer. The fur is like gray and short, and the age could be five. Then is some behavior that all the instances of the class dog could do. These are named methods. The, for example, for this one, there is the method eat and the method walk. So all of them could eat and walk because are instant objects of the class dog. So let's do this on the, the this slide on, on the code. So I'm going to comment this. Okay, okay go to the dog uh, script. So here first, we are going to declare all the fields. Okay, for the breed field, I'm going to use a type string with the name of the variable breed and initialize it empty, an empty string. For the food, uh, I'm going to use uh, string two. Initialize it empty. And for the age, I'm going to use a int, an integer. So int age, uh, we are going to initialize it to zero. Okay, now, if we want to build an instance object of the class dog, we need something to build it. This is name is constructor. So for the constructor, we use the name the, the same name of the class. And here is going to receive some data. The, the name of these things are you going to review it on the next lessons. But here you're going to receive data to create a new instance of a dog. So because we are going to use breed, food, and age. So when you create this instance object of a dog, you need to send all this data in the same order. First the breed, later the four, and then the age. If you don't do that in that order, there could be an error or a logic error when you are executing your code. So first, we are going to store the data. So let me call it. So for, for that, we are going to use the keyword this. This is referring to the, in the moment that we are using an, an instance object, is going to talk about that instance object. So if we are going to use this, we are saying that we are referring to this instance object. So that is why we use the keyword this. Because each time a new instance object of the class dog is created, is going to have its own data, breed, food, and age. And if, for example, we create three instances of the class dog, we are going to have uh, three times the same value word, the, the value of read. So if we want to refer to just the instance that we are going to talk about, we are going to use this. So for this read field, we are going to store. If you see here, I'm talking about the data that is sent to the constructor. And here I'm talking about the this breed variable on the class. If you don't if you don't want to confuse, you can name it differently. But because you are talking about this one, is not going to be any confusion during the code execution. So you can leave it, if you want, you can leave it with the same name or with another one. Okay, let's store the rest of the fields, of the, all, all of the other data. The four and the age. Okay, and I'm going to print here inside the constructor the breed of the dot, so you could see that it's working. So print to terminal this breed. Let's compile it. Oh, there is, oh, sorry, sorry. You have to specify which type of data you are receiving, sorry. 
So here is the string for the breed, the string for the four, and the integer or the age. Sorry, I forget about it. But it's, if you see, it's really important to declare which type this constructor is going to receive. Okay, there is the comp compilation successful. So here's our declaration of the class dog, just with fields and constructor. Let's go to the main and create a new instance. So the class dog is type dog. So besides of using int or string or boolean, we are going to use dog because it's a class. If you see, the name of the class should be the, the same name that is declared here and is normally uh, used with camel case, with an upper case in the, in the first letter. So here I'm going to create a variable of type dog, for example, body of, of the bodies. I don't know if you remember about them. <laughs> so we are going to create a new instance object of the class dog. So we create new dog, and here we are going to send the data in the same order than here. So let me copy it. So for the breed that is a string, uh, for example, body is a golden retriever. The four is, is gold, uh, is the color of gold and is uh, long hair. And the age, of, for example, two years old. So here we are creating a new instance of the class dog. Let's run it. So here, this new dog is calling the constructor here, sending all this data to the constructor. The constructor is going to store for this instance object the values, uh, the data breed for an age, and it's going to print this breed. So if you create this instance after, it's going to say that is a golden retriever. Okay, let's create an, another instance of dog. For example, this is going to be named Aquila <laughs> and will be a husky. So the husky has a um, fur that is black and white. Uh, let's have just a black one. And with the long hair and the age, let's have a three, for example. So compile this. And if I run it, if you see, it's printing for this instance of of the of the class uh, dog, the, the body variable is going to print this breed uh, value. So it's showing golden retriever. And later for this instance, Aquila is going to print Husky. If you see, is there no confusion about the data because we are using this keyword. So let's go to the presentation again. So we already do the fields. Let's go into to build, the, to, to declare the methods. These are the things that the dog class can do. So we are going to create the method eat and walk. So for the method eat, we are going to say that it is going to return a type string is named it, is not receiving any parameter. If you see, there is, it's not receiving any data and is returning a string type. So, for example, we are going to return. Oh, let's return instead of the string, an uh, integer. Okay, so this is going to return, for example, it's going to eat one uh, pound of, of dog food multiplied by the age of the dog. So for use, uh, sorry, two pounds of uh, food of, of dog and using this 
data of this instance object of the age of the dog. So the data of the dog for this instance dog is going to be multiplied for, for two. Let's compile it. Okay, so if I return here, I can say body go to eat. So if I call this, it's going to return the age multiplied by two. So we are going to print this one. System dot output dot print all. Okay, if I compile it and run it, oh, oh, sorry, I missed the end. <laughs> Let's run it, and if you see, it's going to execute for this instance body the method eat that is returning the age of the body multiplied by two. If you see, it's printing four. But I don't know if from here, just in the, in the terminal, I don't know from who is printing this, just inside the code. So let's give it a little bit of more data. Let's add a string oh, separating some of the data. And let's print the breed of the of the dog. Oh, sorry about that. So body, if we need to access the data inside body, we can access with a point and we can access uh, this data, for example, breed. Oh, sorry. So body dot breed is going to print to print to, to retrieve the data from this body instance object the value grid. Let's compile it and run it. If you see it's printing golden retriever four. Let's now uh, implement the next uh, method. Let's create the walk method. Okay, this walk method is not going to return anything. So we have to say that this is going to return nothing with the keyword void. The name of the method. This one is not receiving any data. If you want, you can receive data here. But right now, I'm not going to do that. So we don't need the return method because we are explicitly saying that we are not going to return anything. So let's just print something, okay. So let's going to say that this breed is working. Let's compile it. Oh, sorry, I missed again the end. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, if I compile it, oh, there is all okay. So right now I can call for body, for this instance of the body, the method walk. Let's call this, compile it, and run it. See, golden retriever is walking. If you want to call it for Aquila, it's going to print the other breed dog for this instance. If you see, Husky is walking. Oh. Okay, so there is another type of data that you can store that is type static. Static is a keyword used on the classes because we are going to say that all the instance objects will have this same data. It's a uh, shared data. So, for example, the amount of do the of dogs that are already created, and we are going to update it here. Here, I'm not. If you see, I'm not using the this keyword because 
this amount value is a static one. So the static is shared between all the instance objects. So let's compile it. Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot the type. Okay, there is a int uh, integer. Okay, that is all done. So, for example, if I create just one body, just one instance object of the dog, I can print. For example, the amount of dogs that already exist. So let's do this body dot amount. And if I compile it and run it, the number is one. So let's create, uh, if you create another instance, this value will be updated to two. So if I printed it here, using Aquila, for example, I'm going to print both of them. So you can see that is the data is shared between all the instances. So let's print this. If you see, there are two instances, so each of them is going to share the same value amount that is printing too. Also, you can directly print this value from the class. So the class is named dog, so because it's a static value shared between all the instances, is stored in the class. So if you compile it and run it, if you see, it's printing two dogs. You can access static values in both ways. Okay, we already create the class dog. So let's go to the presentation. So in the lesson, you review a little bit of inheritance. Don't, don't bother if you don't understand it right now. You are going to review it more about it in the next lessons. But the first things that you have to know about inheritance is, be, is that, for example, for our class dog, we, we need an, a new class. For example, the class rescue dog. The rescue dog is already a dog. So we can inheritance all the data from the class dog so we don't have to write it again and add new fields and new methods. So this rescue dog will be a child of the class dog parent because it's going to inheritance all of its fields and methods. Okay, let's implement this class, inherit this child class rescue dog. Okay, let's go to the to the rescue dog um, file. So, because rescue dog will be a child of the uh, class dog, we are going to use the keyword extends. Extends is saying to this class that is a child of dog. Is is uh, so will inheritance all the data, all the fields, and all the methods that the dog class already has. So you don't have to write it again, and in any moment you can access that type of data in any moment. So right now we are just using the data, the extra data, the, the field training, but because this rescue dog is also a dog, we will need the other data too. So let's bring the other data here and when the rescue dog constructor is called we need to use the keyword super the keyword super is going to call the constructor of the parent class so in this case if the parent class is this the dog one and it's going to execute all of these kind of things so here i'm going to set because it's calling the constructor, the constructor is expecting this type of data. So here we are going to send all the data in the same order. Let's do this, okay. And it's going to add the new uh, the value, 
the training for this instance of a rescue dog. And we are going to add the method search people. Oh, I'm going to change this to training type. Okay, here. And the method search people. This method will be only existent in the rescue dog because for the rescue dog is being created. And the rescue dog, it also has uh, all the methods that was already created on its parent dog. So for example, we are going to return, uh, for example, for this um, method, uh, don't, don't bother about these keywords, we are going to talk about it, about them later. So let's uh, receive some data here. For example, um, years of experience. So this will be an integer experience years that this dog will have and let's return an integer with experience years multiplied by this by five for example and we are going to rest the amount of age because if the dog is too old it's going to be less capable to see people right so let's print this age if you see we are not declaring the age value here the the age field was declared on the parent so here we can only use it so experience here multiplied by five less the age of the dog so let's compile this okay it's all well so we are now going to create a new instance of the class rescue dog. Uh, for example, a Dalmatian, uh, let's call it Farman dog, for example, uh, for, to have a more significant name. Uh, let's create a new instance of the rescue dog class. Uh, let's send all the data, for example, at Dalmatian with spots in their fur and age of two. Um, for example, the type of training will be a uh, fireman, for example. So let's compile this. And run it. And execute it. If you see, it's printing Dalmatian. Here, I'm not printing anything about Dalmatian, but because it's calling the constructor parent, it's printing the, the breed uh, Dalmatian. And if you print the actual amount of dogs, Oh, sorry, uh, what was I doing? Oh, sorry, I, I left this character. Okay. If you see, there is already three instances of dogs because rescue dog is a child of the class dog. Okay, we already review all the, all the things that you learned in the lesson one. So let's see if you left some questions. Okay, there is no question. So if you review it this later, uh, share it on, on the forums and I'm going to answer all your questions there if you, if you need help or if you have a question about this masterclass. So if you see, here is the comment section. So for the next uh, masterclass, if you have a doubt, uh, during the, the lesson, write it here, and I'm going to read it and answer for you. Okay, so thanks to coming for the first uh, masterclass. 
the next week we are going to have the second masterclass about the lesson two. So prepare all your doubts, uh, all the questions that you want to solve. And if you have some questions about the, this first lesson, uh, go to the forums and we are going to help you. So have a nice day and see you the next time.